Okay, so we revolve that. This is uh, number six, part A. We need to know what capital R is and what little r is so we can set up our volume formula. All about the rectangles, right? So remember, if I'm making my rectangle, it has to go from what you're revolving around, from the x-axis, to the outermost function. So there it is. There's my capital R. Well, what does that represent? So if I think about it, it's top minus bottom, right? Where's the top of that function? Where does the top of the rectangle hit? Which function? And so I'm looking. It's the unhappy parabola. Mr. Unhappy Parabola is 4x minus x squared. And then I'm going to go for my little r. Little r goes from whatever you're revolving around, the x-axis, to the innermost curve. And in our case, the innermost curve is Mr. X squared. And then the question comes up, well, what are the bounds, right? I'm going to go get, getting ready to set up my equation. The bounds go here from, these have to be x values, right? So they start here, and they stop here. They don't go to 4, because you see how the functions intersect before it gets to 4. So it's not going to go all the way to 4. Your bounds are not going to be 0 to 4. They're going to be 0 to whatever this is. Now, when we did this problem together last week, we took x squared minus uh, x squared and set it equal to 4x minus x squared. And we did all the math of this. We've already done all that stuff. And we came up with the fact that they intersect when x equals 2. And then we figured out that this coordinate, if I plug a 2 into either of these equations, I get a value of 4 out. Do you remember that from, I mean, I'm not, we talked about this already when we did the problem earlier. And now I'm ready to set up the actual integral. So take a second, see if you can do it, and we'll see if we match. Alright, so you have all the pieces at that point, right, to put it all together. So pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of 4x minus x squared quantity squared minus x squared squared. And notice the directions. The directions say set up the integral to find the volume, but don't evaluate it. So you're done. So you don't have to, to say what that actually equals because they're asking you just to set up what the integral would look like. Okie doke. So, part B says, all right, now take this thing and revolve it around the line y equals 6. So, we're going to graph it one more time. The reason why you need all, like, why you need to graph it each time is because your represent, representative rectangles are going to look different. So, although it's a pain in the neck to, to yeah, I've got it graphed already, you still want to graph this guy and uh, show so you can show where those representative rectangles are going to go. By the end of this, you end up making the picture pretty darn good. Like, I know where all these points are. This is 0, 0. This is 2, 4. This is 4, 0 in case I need it. I'm looking at the same little area that's here. But now I'm going to revolve it around this line y equals 6. So I've got to think to myself, all right, self, is it a vertical line or is it a horizontal line? And self says, anybody? A horizontal. Yeah, a horizontal it is. Okay, so I've got a horizontal line at y equals 6. Now, my picture is going to be a little out of kilter because if this is 4, then I'm going to put my line up here. Here's my line. y equals 6. Now think about what that's going to do to this piece, right? If I revolve it around that line, it's going to come up over here. There's going to be a big gaping hole in this guy. Right? It's going to come all the way around. Be a, like a bowl with a hole in the middle.
All right, so now I'm ready. I've got my picture, got all the pieces, I got the visual, and I need to set up my rectangles for this thing. So I'm always going to be perpendicular to what I'm revolving around, and I'm always going to have my rectangle start there and go for capital R to the outermost thing. So here's my capital R rectangle. And then my little r rectangle goes from what I'm revolving around to the innermost thing. So they're my two, my two representative rectangles. Oh yeah, it is like Bugles a snack. You're right, Kat. Cool. I haven't had those for a long time. By the way, did you do the question in advisory today with uh, chips or soda? I was oh, like, I skipped. you skipped it? <laughs> it was like the weirdest question. I was like, chips or soda? What do you mean? You skipped it, but still, yeah. I would choose chips too. Chips would be the thing. Anyway. All right, so um, let's figure out what capital R is. Well, where's the top of the rectangle hit? Say six. Six. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so the top of the rectangle hits six. Where's the bottom of the rectangle hit? Top minus bottom, I'm talking about. Bottom hits the parabola. Uh, so that's the x squared. I mean, the, the happy parabola, so x squared. They're both parabolas, right? But do we have to put it in terms of y? That's a great question, and the answer is no, because Check out what I'm revolving it around. See how this y equals 6 is a horizontal line, just like the x-axis is a horizontal line? So I'm going to treat this as if it were just like I was revolving it around the x-axis, which means I can keep everything as y equals, and I can use the bounds that are x values, OK? Because it's the same. If I were revolving around a vertical line, then I'd have to change all that up. But it's because I'm revolving it around a horizontal line, I'm treating it the same way I would treat like it was going around the x-axis. All right, so little guy over here, his top hits six, but his bottom hits the unhappy parabola. So I've got to keep that in parentheses. Do you know why? I know you know why. Are we going to distribute? Yeah, yeah. Yes, honey. Okay, so it's top minus bottom, but that bottom one has a little more action going on, so I've got to literally distribute the negative. So really this bottom is going to be, the little r is going to be six minus four x plus uh, an x squared. Distribute the negative. And then you've got enough to be able to set up the, uh, the integral. So here we go. Pi, don't forget pi. <laughs> Going from, what are my bounds? What are the x values that I'm bounded by? And Seal, I'm going to answer that. Yeah, Kat's right, you can't. So Seal asks, am I able to write the same equations and then just subtract 6 from the end and the end, it'll come out totally different. The algebra of that will not work. And it, this goes back to, I know those representative rectangles are a pain, but they are so much easier to understand these problems, to see where it actually is hitting. It's always top minus bottom or right minus left. And um, they kind of set things up for you a little bit better. So my bounds are still the x values, 0 and 2. My capital R is 6 minus x squared squared. My little r is 6 minus 4x plus x squared squared with respect to x. And lucky for us, they told us we don't have to solve it. We just have to set it up. All right, there goes number 6. Questions on any of that? Okie doke. So here's what I want you to do. We're going to go to number 8. And number 8, actually down here, we're going to start with the area. 8's at the bottom of the page. So it says, sketch the graphs and find the areas for the regions bounded by y equals x cubed, x equals 0, and y equals 8. All right, so let's see what this guy looks like, right? We're going to figure out, this is number eight, we're going to figure out the area. Well, it's a cubic function. Squiggle, OK? 
get your squiggle on. x equals 0. Well, x equals 0 is your y-axis. So the y-axis is going to be one of the things that we, um, that we use. And then we need y equals 8. Well, y equals 8 is a horizontal line at 8. And so seal. Are you right? The arc. And uh, Seal's question is: Can it? Can the capital from the last problem? Can the capital R squared be instead of six minus x squared, x squared minus six? And the answer is no. And here's why: Because if you're looking at this and you draw your rectangle here. It's always the top of the rectangle minus the bottom of the rectangle. So the top of the rectangle hits the 6. So that has to go first. And the bottom of the rectangle hits the x squared. And if you were to foil at, like if you were to look at this, your positive and negatives would be messed up because you see how you're, you want to change it from x squared to being a negative x squared and from the negative 6 to being a positive 6. So your signs are backwards which are going to mess the whole thing up. It's going to mess up what your answers are going to be. So you can't change x squared minus 6 to 6 minus x squared and get the same answer. It, it won't work that way. Your positive and negatives will be all messed up. OK. You guys are probably ahead. Of, yeah, go on. So, so like, I kind of just did this in my head. I don't know if I'm right, but like, if you square out both of those, you get the same equation. Because it's squared. I, I oh, know. I might be wrong. Because this is squared. Like if you were to do six minus x squared, like that that thing to the squared, and then you were to do x squared minus six, and then the whole thing squared, you'd get the same equation, right? You'd get thirty six minus twelve x plus x squared. Let me write this down. Hold on you would get 36 minus 12x plus x squared if you went that way. And if you were to do it the other way, you would get x squared. No, I'm wrong. Why am I, why am I being silly? 12x would be 36 minus 12x squared plus x to the fourth, right? Does that sound better? Yeah. Um, and then like, I because I know I asked you last time, and you, you said like since it's squared, um, that like since it's squared, it doesn't matter, right? I can see algebraically that it's going to come out to be the same the same thing. You're right because of the squaring of it. But I would not get in the habit. I would I would try to, yeah. Cats with me. Uh, that's what I was just going to say. I would try to keep the habit of keeping the top minus the bottom, and in this case, the top is what you're revolving around. Okay. It's okay. it's just safe. It's like talking about the safe road, you know. It's always it's better to keep it on the safe road than try to maneuver a different like, way. I, I'm just talking about it as like a checking point of view after I get done the work, you know, go yeah. back and to check it. It does turn out to be the same thing because it's being squared, but. Eh. You know. All right, we ready for eight? All right, you probably are already ahead of me. Did you figure out this area already? You might have. Here it is. Here's mine, my picture. I'm taking this thing here, and I only am asking for the area this time. Only the area. So you got to watch what they're what they're doing. I'm not revolving anything. I'm just finding area. So here I go. I need to know. Um, where my bounds are, right? So this guy is uh, the point zero zero. This guy here, I know my y is eight. Oh, I'm writing that funny. I know my y is eight, but I don't know necessarily what the x is, right? So I'm going to go to my equation. And if I know that y is 8, then 8 equals x cubed. 
and I cube root e. So it's two. Right, exactly. So it's a two. So cube root e gives me a two. That coordinate's a two. Two eight. If you're finding the area, your area and your representative rectangle are just going to be between those two curves. It's a good reminder from section 11.1. And so the area, when I set it up, do I need a pi? No. No, right, no pi. I ain't, I'm not revolving, so no pi needed. I'm just doing my bounds. I am taking this from 0 to 2, my x values. The top of my rectangle hits the 8. He comes first. The bottom of the rectangle hits the cubic. And so there it is. Now we're so smart we can figure this out. This one's not that hard. Right? So I go and I'm going to antiderivative it. I'm going to come up here. So I have um, an antiderivative of 8 is an 8x. For an x cubed, it's x to the fourth over 4. And I'm going to take that guy between 0 and 2. f of b minus f of a means that I don't have to, really, the 0 is not going to matter. It's just putting a 2 in. Putting a 2 gives me 16 minus 16 over 4. 2, two to the fourth is 16. So 16 over 4 is 4. And so I get an answer that's 12. That one wasn't bad at all, right? So there's area. No revolving. If I go to flip the page, now you're looking at taking this guy and doing all your revolutions. Now this one, again, is not going to uh, make you solve it. It just says, it says don't evaluate, just set up the integral. And so, I'm going to draw the first picture with you, the same picture, right? We've got this cubic function. Really, you're only in the first quadrant, so you really don't need to draw the whole thing. But x cubed, x equals 0, y equals 8. Here it is. Here's my section. By the way, this original picture for every single one of these is not going to change. you got the same picture every single time. This one is revolving it around the x-axis. Well, if I revolve it around the x-axis, it's going to come down here like this. And so I'm going to set you free uh, to ch for, for now, just do A, letter A. Give me an answer for A. You're setting up the integral. We'll see if we match. Toss your questions my way if you have them. Sweater. Yeah. Would we be able to do like uh, D as well or no? Yeah, we're going to do all of these in just a couple minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to work. That's our goal for the day is to see if we can get through these, these problems together. All right, so here's hopefully where you're at. You've got the volume is pi going between 0 and 2 of 8 squared minus x cubed squared with respect to x. We good on that? All right, so let's try the next one. We've got now revolving around the line y equals 8. So if my picture starts like this, like it has, I 
This one's kind of interesting because when I revolve it around that line, it's going to come over here, kind of like that. Now this should get you thinking a little bit because does it have a hole? Is this a holy graph? Are we donutting? No. Right. This guy is totally now back to section 11.2 on disks. Now, if you think about 11.2, it was all about pi r squared, right? The area of a circle. So when I set up my integral, it's going to be whatever the radius is. And the radius would just be that. The radius is just, it doesn't go, goes from the line you're revolving around, but there is no hole, so you don't need a little r. It just goes from what you're revolving around to the outermost part. So my capital R is going to be top is 8, bottom is x cubed. This is 0. There's no hole. And so when I set up my work, it's going to be pi times the integral going from 0 to 2 still of 8 minus x squared x cubed squared with respect to x. And even if you didn't remember that it didn't have a hole, you'd be putting in a zero anyway. So it would be this guy minus zero squared, which is still going to be the same thing. So even if you forgot about that not having a hole, you'd still be okay. All right, draw the picture one more time. Here we go. Now remember, this line is y equals 8. And this time, they want me to ro revolve it around the line y equals 9. Well, y equals 9 is up here. Which means that when I revolve it, it's going to come, it's going to be a space, and then be over here in this neck of the woods. This one has a hole. I'm going to give you a second, see if you can set up the integral. Did you get it? Did you get it? Thumbs up. I'm seeing some thumbs up. Woo! 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 See, those lines don't scare you. When they revolve it around those lines, they used to scare me back in the day when I was in college. I was like, what the heck? Okay. Let's go on to D. D is now revolving it around the y-axis. So things change up, right? We know that. We've got three changes to make. We've got to make sure that our function is in terms of x, x equals. <coughs> and we also need to think about our bounds are now going to be y values. And the third thing we need to think about is that our representative rectangles are going horizontal on us. So three things happen when you are now around the y-axis. Picture doesn't change, though. So same picture. Here it goes. The sweater. Yeah. Just one thing for the little r for a number uh, for letter c. Yeah. Out, because you did nine minus eight, right? Yes. Okay. Top minus bottom. Yeah. That's tricky because you don't think about that. Where's one coming from, right? Where's this one in the midst of this? But yeah, it's totally the top was nine, and the bottom was eight. So top minus bottom gave me one. Yep. Okay. All right. So we're setting up our picture. Here it goes. 
same picture. Now it's going around the y-axis, so it's actually coming over this way. One thing I need to consider is that I've got uh, y equals x cubed. Move it up so you can see it. Y equals x cubed, I can't use that. I need it to be x equals, so I'm going to have to cube root both sides. So cube root makes this be y, the cube root of y, and that equals x. Now some of you had uh, got into a jam with that number 3 from the homework because you probably left it as a cube. Why don't you just take this guy and call him y to the one-third? y to the one-third, so that you don't have to deal with that so much. That might make it easier. This one, does it have a hole? No, I'm seeing shaking the heads, right? So this guy has no hole. So it's just zero. We're not going to use that. So really, again, it's like section 11.2 on disks. My representative rectangle is going to be horizontal going from what I'm revolving around, perpendicular to it, to the outermost curve. So to set that up, my capital R is going to be, if I look at this, the outside hits the cube root graph. Well, I'm using y to the one-third. So y to the one-third. Minus zero, right minus left. And so I have all the pieces to be able to put this together. I might want to be reminded of these coordinates, right? This coordinate was zero, zero. This coordinate over here was 2, 8. Now remember, because I'm doing it around the y-axis, I'm using the y values as my bounds. So here it goes. Pi going from 0 to 8 of my y to the 1 third squared dy. And again, they did not ask you to solve it. They just said set it up. So there you go. All right, E. Now we're going to revolve it around a line x equals 2. So let's see, same picture. I revolve it around here. This coordinate, remember, was 2, 2, 8. If I revolve it around that line, it's going to come over this way. Here's my line, y equals 2. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, x equals 2. x equals 2. This time I'm holy again. I'm not a disk. I've got a hole in the middle. Let's set up our rectangles. So it has to come from whatever you're revolving around, perpendicular to it, to the outmost part. That goes all the way to there. So all the way over to the y-axis. If I do my innermost part from what I'm revolving around, that's the line y, uh, that x equals 2, to the curve, that hits the cubic guy. All right, so think about what your capital R is. Think about what your little r is. See if you can write them down. We'll see if we match, and then you can set up the, the volume formula. So your capital R should be 2, right minus left, 2 minus 0. Your little r should be 2 minus your y to the 1 third, the cube root of y. And so putting your volume together, you've got pi times the integral from 0 to 8 of 2 squared minus 2 minus y to the 1 third squared with respect to y.
All right, last one. Woohoo! Same picture. Are you tired of drawing the same picture? My horizontal line got a little slanty there. Now remember, this is a 2. This coordinate here is 2, 8. If I'm over here at x equals 3, that's a line here, x equals 3. There's a gap between that and my graph. So this guy's going to be seriously holy. Kind of comes over this way. By the way, these little drawings that I make with the extra stuff over here, you don't need that necessarily. It's just I kind of want to give you the visual of where it's going, how it's traveling. I guess it kind of does help you to know whether it has a hole or it doesn't have a hole when you think about how it revolves, but really it's just that one part. Now, I'm going to set you free. See if you can set up that integral. It's going to be, going to be fun. Pardon the interruption. Once again, a reminder to please wipe down your desk and area before leaving class. Reminder to repeat it to please wipe down your desk and area before leaving class. Thank you. One cat, I had uh, Maddie Murphy came. So I've had one child today. That's crazy. I know. I will have more fun once you have us. <laughs> you know I love you all. <laughs> I, we'll be it next week. I know. I'm looking forward to that. It's not the same without y'all here. And I wish we could all be like coming at the same time like be in the same room at the same time but I know because we have such a small class I and mean, it's what it's Brenna and Seal I think or something like that or my B kids that's so annoying yeah such a bummer okay it's we crazy because remember two years ago we had like 30 kids oh I know in that honors pre -cal class holy moly yes. there were a lot like of you children kids. That was quite the dynamic. A lot of different personalities, that's for sure. Hello, Mr. Skinner. I have none. <laughs> um, down to the final C you are. <laughs> You're strong. I got my, got my kids, my strong kids. All right, so um, are we good with this guy? Your capital R was three, your little r was three minus y to the one third, and then you plug it in and you got your stuff. So that's section 11.3. There's not much else I can tell you. All right, so when it has a hole in it, that's what you do. Um, we are, for tomorrow, you're going to finish up 1 through 8 and the test prep questions. I couldn't put numbers on them because you'll see they don't have numbers. They're actually from old AP exams, some of them. Uh, when we get together on Wednesday, we're going to go over those and talk a little bit about an intro to section 11.4. So we're actually not doing the notes on 11.4 until Thursday. So that's kind of where our week's going. Uh, oh wait, seven. Seven, yeah, there's seven. Seven that made it. All right, questions, problems, issues, anything? Uh, whatever, we should have to hang out for two seconds. I minutes. can absolutely hang out. Thank you. Uh-huh. Anybody else? All right, I will see you then on Wednesday at 9.30. And uh, shoot me an email you got if you have any questions or you want to Zoom. See ya.